Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome along this morning to this webinar from Global Reviews. My name is Jared Farrell and I am a Senior Client Advisor with Global Reviews. This morning we are going to be talking about mobile phone network providers and I'm very excited to invite you along to the session this morning where we're going to go, go through some research that we recently completed internationally in November 2014. Before I do talk about that research though, I would like to talk a little bit about who we are and what Global Reviews does. So we work with over 500 brands worldwide. We are putting brands in the homes of over 50,000 consumers annually around the world and we use in all of our research products lifelike methodology within market consumers and we help our clients measure how consumers are moving through conversion funnels and essentially measuring both return on advertising and investment and ultimately customer experience with uh, the clients and brands that we work with. The methodology behind what we do, we use our own proprietary methodology on screen in front of you. You can see the end-to-end -end funnel that we use moving from the discover phase through to the relate phase in measuring the customer experience. Looking specifically at the first three phases of this actual funnel, the discover, the consider and the act phase, these are very, very important parts of the funnel. They'd be the earlier parts of the journey and the discover phase we use a program which is called the Digital Marketing Effectiveness Program to measure consumer experience as they move through the discover phase when they're looking to purchase a product from a company like yours in an industry like yours. The Digital Marketing Effectiveness Program measures the pathway to your website and helps clients develop performance measurements and essentially strategic objectives in both minimizing lost opportunities but also trying to maximize return on advertising investment or marketing investment. What I'm going to talk about this morning, however, in more detail is in the consider and the act phase where we're looking at sales effectiveness. And the digital sales effectiveness program that we're going to go through this morning looks at how consumers who are now at the doorstep of your website are proceeding through from being introduced to your website and your products, their initial engagement with the different things that you have to promote to them, all the way through to the channel selection and ultimately online purchase and checkout. Through the digital sales effectiveness program, we identified the issues experienced by 95% of customers who are looking to purchase from you. And as I mentioned earlier on, we only use in-market customers. Now, what does that mean? What that means is within any individual market, there are a proportion of people who are looking to buy your product within the next 90 days. Typically, in any industry, it may vary from 5% of the overall industry, of potential customers who are looking to buy to you, up to about 20%. And so we only ask questions or we only invite those who are in market and considering buying a, per a product like yours in your industry in the next 90 days to Put, 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 complete and participate in our research. So as I said, the program focuses on the consider and the act phases of the journey and we only do this within market consumers. But what is the methodology behind the digital sales effectiveness program and how do we get the unique data streams that we do that delivers international or unique insights internationally to our, our clients around the world? So there are four key components that make up the data streams within this program. The first one is we look at customer behavior, where we recruit users to perform tasks on your website and then to report back to us with regards to success rates. We actually measure on screen success rates as well, efficiencies, paths that are taken through sites, and we use um, Interesting, we use cutting edge technology with regards to passively measuring what consumers are doing on screen as they're moving through the purchase journey on your website. The second thing that we do is we look at customer attitude. We use surveys pre and post interaction on your website and we then find out from the customer's point of view how satisfied are they and how do those expectations match up with regards to what they actually found when they completed the journey on your website. We also conduct a customer audit where the customer 
ranks the importance of the website and elements during the task as they were completing the purchase and the customer experience when they're completing the purchase on your website. So we're looking at things like navigation, feel, look and feel, and content. And then finally, we have a best practice audit. Global reviews internationally, we've been doing this for many, many years, 14 years to be exact. And we, over those years, have developed uh, a wide suite of tools that we can use to measure best practice and to benchmark best practice around the world with regards to customer experience and specifically looking at digital platforms. We conduct a best practice audit of our clients' websites, and that gives us basically a provision of relative, is there a provision of relevant content and tools available for the customer as they're moving through uh, the customer experience and the journey, and is the customer supported and facilitated adequately in order to be able to complete the tasks that they're looking to complete on your website. These four data streams are then combined together so that we can look at the customer journey in what we call phases, categories, and stages. And I'm going to go through them in a moment. But a key point here at this stage is that we understand the customer journey as they're moving through your website. And what we're able to do is we're able to look at, at each individual step in that website, how important is the step that the customer is now taking, and how important is that step in comparison to the next step that they're going to take. So the results that we look at, or the, the, the results and the data that we take in, we weight that data on the basis of the importance of that step within the journey. So combining all of this data together, weighting it, and then turning it into ultimately the final results. Now, the final results themselves and how they're actually broken down First of all, we start off with one single score, where we can compare one website against another on the basis of what we call the customer experience score, or the digital sales effectiveness experience score. So this is one number which is taken from all of the data which has been gleaned from the customers as they're moving through your website. We will send 50 customers, between 50 and 20 customers to a your website or a competitor's website, where we're looking at the performance of your website or a competitor's website. We will send customers, in-market customers, to each of these websites in the same fashion with a separate group of in-market customers for each individual website. This enables us to benchmark the performance of your brand within the marketplace and against the competitive landscape. We can tell you why some customers abandon the purchase journey on your website and maybe go off and complete the purchase with a competitor. So this is really important, but how do we actually display this data? We have unique data coming in, we have four data streams, and we are combining it, we are weighting it based on best practices and also uh, world-leading experience. How is the data then actually distributed back to our clients? So we understand the purchase journey, and we take layers when it comes to actually working through the data and distributing the data back to our clients. We begin with what we call a, the phases. So we all ta already talked about these phases. We had the consider phase and we had the act phase. But within the phases we have stages and these are el essentially the different steps on the journey as the customer moves through your website. So these stages start with something like introducing product options and may move to initial engagement and then it's evaluating options into facilitating decisions. And it's as the, coaster, as the consumer moves closer to the actual point of purchase, we are measuring different types of things and the different things on your website which provide support and facilitate customers with regards to moving on to that next step. Underneath stages we have categories and categories come in as different type of elements which may make up a stage and you may have more than one category within an individual stage. So to give you an example for introducing options, we have understanding fees and charges maybe. Then within the category we also have subcategories and the subcategories are made up of these four unique data streams that I talked about before and will be dependent on where the customer is within the particular journey. A key point however is that we roll these scores up and then we take all of these scores up to the top and we create this single customer experience score which becomes a key dashboard benchmark or a KPI with regards to understanding how you are performing against a competitor. However, on the other side of it, because it's a layered approach, it's a diagnostic tool. We can drill down into the individual components that are making up your website and we can establish and understand 
why some things are working and other things aren't. We can compare that to competitors within your market or we can compare it to competitors in other markets that we analyze and research and we can make recommendations with regards to best practice moving forward. So within this specific benchmark which is the mobile phone network providers benchmark we have seven stages. So we're moving from initial engagement all the way through to checkout and within these stages there are a number of categories. I'm not going to go through every stage this morning. I am going to talk about just some key stages and then go into a couple of categories and subcategories within that. But to give you an example of what could come in within the consider stage where we can see there are four elements here, initial engagement, introducing options, evaluating options and facilitating decisions. Here are an example of some of the subcategories and categories that fall into these stages within the consider phase in this particular mobile phone provider benchmark. So there's a large amount of detail. The methodology is comprehensive, complex and profound. We've been working on this for a very long time and we believe that we are the world leaders and our clients certainly believe it and we have a wide list of clients around the world who work with us. So moving on to the actual study this morning, the International Mobile Phone Network Provider Study and getting right into the detail. So for this particular study you can see all these brands that are on screen in front of you are the brands or websites that we conducted research with as part of this particular study. So we sent in-market consumers to each one of these websites and as I mentioned before these are a separate group of in-market consumers for each website and we have 16 different brands in front of you. You will recognize many of the brands because they are market leaders and some of them are market leaders in countries like the UK, other countries like Australia and some are market leaders in countries like us, um, New Zealand and America. So this really truly is an international best practice with regards to what the brand leaders in mobile phone network providers are delivering from a customer experience point of view. So the results is going to be very, very interesting. So to get straight into it, we talked about this number one customer experience overall benchmark score which can be used as a dashboard or, as a K or a KPI. Up in the top right hand corner you can see that the average across the world in the study that we conducted is 52%. I'm going to go through geographically some of the best performers. We've got Verizon came in at 59% for New Zealand and is the top performer. In the United Kingdom, Vodafone UK scores the highest. Tesco also does quite well within specific stages in the overall benchmark and I'm going to highlight some of their figures later on. We also have the United States, T-Mobile comes in at 57% and in Australia, Optus is the highest performer, followed by Telstra and then we have Vodafone Australia, which I'm also going to highlight some of the things that they've been up to that can show how they are doing some things better than some of the other providers, not only in their market, but in other geographical territories around the world. So these are the providers and the brands that we uh, used as part of this actual study. Now looking at it on a geographical basis, what we can see in front of us is a large line chart. At the bottom of the line chart, along the axis, you can see that the, the phases or the stages are the same as the stages that I actually detailed earlier on. So these are the stages within this particular benchmark. So we are going from an initial engagement into introducing options, evaluating options, facilitating decisions, channel selection, online purchase and checkout. The lines on the line graph are split geographically. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at the industry average on a geographical basis and we can see how different ge ge geographies are performing against other geographies around the world. So for example, straight away the UK figure stands out because they're underperforming against the other geographies or the geographical locations around the world, which is a very, very interesting finding. Especially in some cases where the scores are quite stark in comparison to how they're performing against other industries. So for example, in initial engagement, there's a very large gap between the UK and New Zealand, 53 and 70. And then we can see that there's a general industry pain within facilitating decisions and maybe even evaluating options. So there's a geographical story here and the UK can maybe learn from what providers are doing in other geographies around the world. So who is the best or who is performing the best at meeting the customer needs? So now I'm going to detail just a couple of the key
key providers within the market. So I'm looking at just five providers, Optus, Tesco, Verizon, Vodafone UK, and 3Mobile in the UK. As we know, there are a wide range or a large number of brands that were in this particular study, and the reasons why I pulled these ones out is because there's some of them are top performers, some of them are performers in particular areas, and then some of them are not performing as well. And I think that by looking at the differences of what's going on between the numbers and then actually going to the individual websites, we can see what's driving the numbers and, and basically what the consumers are telling us with regards to the difficulties they had when they were completing certain tasks or why certain websites are achieving very well with regards to meeting their needs. So, straight away we can see then these four areas. Optus are scoring quite well with regards to the, f the earlier part of the journey, initial engagement and introducing options. Tesco spikes in the evaluating options stage. Very interesting because at an earlier part of the stage they're not scoring as well. Verizon is coming up very strongly with regards to online purchase, whereas 3Mobile is right down there very, very low on 26%. So these are the areas that I'm going to be looking at. These are the different brands. I want to start off with the very, very first area, initial engagement. There is a large disparity in numbers here, and I want to see what is actually driving this 53% score for Tesco as opposed to the 74% score for Optus. So this first stage, initial engagement, what actually creates or drives initial engagement. What are customers' first impression of a website and a company? They have come to your website for the first time, maybe. They have a specific need in mind. Remember, we're talking about in-market customers. How do uh, site elements perform like navigation and privacy? Is the website building trust? And is it delivering a value proposition? And then, at all times, we have to consider, are we facilitating the consumer as they're moving through this particular stage of the pathway to purchase? Key performers in this area, Optus coming in as the strongest, which we already know at 74%, the industry average at 62%, and Labara is coming in at 28%. So one of the, the brands that I didn't actually detail as part of the line chart in the previous slide. So what drives performance in initial engagement? So meeting expectations and building trust and assisting the needs of the customers are two key elements which are or brand metrics within initial engagement that are driving performance. And so if I pull up the industry average here, which is the broken black line, we can immediately see that Tesco is behind or below the industry average when it comes to meeting expectations and building trust and also in assisting the needs of the customer. We can see where Optus is performing very well with regards to assisting the needs of the customer and that is what is driving up their initial engagement score. So. As part of the methodology, we asked consumers to complete a particular task. And after that task, we asked them a number of questions with regards to how they got on. And so on, in front of you, we have some of the results from the customer audit or the behavioral audit with regards to how they were completing the, uh, how they got on completing the task. And so we can see, gave the impression that this company could be trusted. These are the scores of how Tesco performs against the top performer. Has a visual design that is appealing. Tesco is behind the line on all of the results. Looks like a site that caters for people like me. Looks like an easy website to use. Offers a clear starting point for information I expect to find about mobile phones. The page is uncluttered, allowing me to easily find information on the page and displays all the information I expect to see on a home page. All of these are pretty, pretty critical elements when it comes to actual initial engagement. When a person is now on your website for the first time, those first 10 seconds are probably the most important 10 seconds because if they can't find what they want, they will abandon and they will go somewhere else. The longer they are on your website, the more likely they are to stay to complete the actual task. The goal gradient effect. And so looking specifically at looks like an easy website to use and even the uh, easy starting point for information I expect to find about mobile phones. These are two key components where Tesco is really not performing. And when we look at some of the voice of the customer where we have actually verbatims of what the customer says on how they actually got on when they were completing this task, one customer says the visual design was almost too bland and basic. It gave the impression of not wanting to make too much effort for the person looking. It needs to retain the basic layout but put a little more home into the design. It make it feel less sterile, to make it feel less sterile. So this is the Tesco website. 
what are they talking about? One other key component that we measure within the initial engagements is the value proposition and is the value proposition coming out at this stage. Tesco's value proposition is not scoring very highly, particularly in, if you compare it to somebody like Optus and against the industry average it is significantly under indexing as well. So they talked about a bland website. What does that mean? So some things that we know about website design are that when consumers come to actually looking at websites for the first time, they scan a website. They don't read a website. The human eye is very good at picking up color, and it's also very good at picking up shapes. So this is the idea that if we group things closely together, then that makes a point to us or it indicates to us that these things are of relevance importance. So the idea being that if things are grouped either on color or they're grouped on shape, the eye will automatically start to think that these are actually elements which should be together and have a similar relevance. So if we are actually forcing the consumer to slow down and to start reading the website, they don't want to do that because the human eye, they will pick up where do I need to go on this page in order to actually just find out what I actually need to find out. So when we have a website where there's an awful lot of similar color, then that actually doesn't help us from the point of view of um, trying to scan the page and move through things quickly. So Tesco for, is an example of this where we have a lot of the color is the same and while the site may actually be very simple, we need that color which helps us to understand and move quickly through actually scanning the site. So is a second point then that the different types of things that we're looking for in initial engagement is the information presented in terms of customer needs. Is there access to a comparison table within one click from the home page? Why choose this company? Is there information about the history of the company and what the company does? Contextual contact details. As a person moves through the website, they may be a new customer, they may have FAQ questions with regards to being a new customer of sales, or they may be a current customer and they may have FAQ questions with regards to troubleshooting problems as a current customer. As they come to the website, having these contextual contact details is really, really important. Having telephone numbers on the home page are really, really important for building trust, for showing that you actually want to talk to the customers. And so that is the point I make with regards to FAQ and help forms. Looking at the Optus page in comparison, we can see straight away that the, the, the value proposition or the marketing communications messages here are very, very strong. Information above the fold is really two sections which are being used to communicate a marketing message. And so also we have just above the fold popular phones, latest phones, hot offers and prepaid phones. So this is information where it's placed that indicates to us that we should continue scrolling down because there's more information. So by doing that, putting information right on the fold, it encourages or tells us that there's information further down. Grouping by relevance is very good here. We can see that on the right-hand side, the purple or dark blue blocks, we can see that the different types of things are grouped together on the basis of the customer needs. So pay your bill, check your bills, different types of benefit buttons or actions of what you would expect. But we also have up the top left hand or on the top of the screen we have the tabs which would be more generic type of searches. They may be by device or they may be by uh, bundles for example. So what's very interesting here is that there's different types of signposts based on the customer need and what we also have is we have the use of of illustrations beside words which help customers when it comes to signposting because there's more than one um, excuse me there's more than one way in which they can read the text or look at the image and it communicates to them what they might actually be looking for. for so again coming back to this point of scanning that they can move very quickly through the site as we already talked about the marketing proposition is clearly defined and below the fold as we move down past this section that I was talking about which was on the fold we can see that from a search point of view as we move through the different devices we can click on a device and the marketing message beside that device actually changes so the filter option is on the home page it brings the information forward we're not leaving the home page and that is key because it's not bringing us off down to a discovery page 
and it's keeping us close to the clear call to action which is on the home page. A key element of web design being to balance the number of discovery pages and funnel pages as we want to move our customer through the conversion journey on the pathway to purchase. So here there are just some examples with regards to the differences in initial engagement between Optus and Tesco. So where can industry players learn from each other? So going back to this chart that we looked at earlier on, and specifically looking at online purchase, we talked about the fact that Verizon was doing very, very well, whereas 3Mobile isn't scoring quite as well. And so what can these providers learn from each other? So what is the online purchase stage? This is the stage that evaluates how your website manages the beginning of customer purchase process and we measure best practice elements for the shopping cart type interface. We also look at supporting content required by customers as they go through checkout so they would be security and privacy and a lot of elements like that and as always the scores are weighted according to importance during the particular phase in the journey that they're at at the moment. We already saw the Verizon was the highest score here. Industry average is 43% and TPG in Australia is the lowest in this particular stage scoring 12%. So what drives performance? What are the elements that make up the online purchase. So we have explain online options and we have shopping cart and the areas highlighted are the scores for three. And so we can see that three is significantly underperforming against the industry average when it comes to the shopping cart facility. So I can bring that up. And they're also underperforming when it comes to explain op online options. And we can also see then where Verizon is scoring quite well with regards to the shopping cart. So what are Verizon doing that's really working and what are three doing that's scoring them so low? So again, looking at some of the results as the consumers move through the website and how they actually scored the different elements and components in the online purchase element of the uh, stage that we're looking at or the phase that we're looking at. So straight away we can see pre-online purchase information and introducing security and privacy. Three is underperforming against Verizon but particularly in the introducing and security and privacy element. And then again in the shopping cart user controls, three is scoring zero percent in comparison to Verizon who are scoring 75 percent. Shopping cart information, three is also scoring very low in comparison to Verizon. So there's definitely an element to which three could focus more on the shopping cart uh, facility and support in order to help consumers more with regards to this stage of the actual journey. Two key questions that we asked. Before I started completing the online purchase, I was satisfied that the website explained what would be involved in the online application process. And before starting the online purchase, I felt that information I would enter would be kept safe and secure. Verizon scores 90% for the first question, whereas 3 scores 76, and Verizon scores 81 for the second question, whereas 3 scores 70%. So these are the type of things which are driving the consumer to score 3 at a lower level. And so an actual verbatim then from a customer as they were completing a task on the 3 uh, website, when I tried to use the following password, it gave me an error to say that I needed to use a password with at least one number and one letter, when technically it does. So error message was pretty useless. So at this stage, consumers expect things to work. If things don't work, then trust starts to be affected. And so at that stage, then they start to lose confidence in the website and the provider. And when they're putting in personal information and very important information, it doesn't take a lot for them to abandon. And really, the provider needs to present risk reduction strategies in order for the consumer to feel confident about the purchase that they're making. So what was the task that we actually asked consumers to complete? Find a HTC pay-as-you-go phone was the task, not the full task, but the majority of it for the three mobile website. So looking at the three mobile website and the typical journey that the in-market consumer will have taken as they were trying to find a HTC phone on the three mobile website, they'd click on the store first, they would be brought to this page which was find a product, but I'm here to find a prepay plan and a phone that goes with a prepay plan on the main page. Within the home page, I can't find prepay plan. I can't find it at the t above the fold within the product details page. I scroll down and I find pay monthly price plans. It's the fourth item of five items within this page. It's close towards the bottom. I think that this is closest to what I'm looking for, so I click on that. But the actual prepay, bill pay, and phones is not available at this point. So I click on that and it brings me into a product detail page with regards to the various different elements that are available to me 
in the prepay plan, but there are no phones at this stage. Over on the right hand side we can see of the page view six phones on this plan, but ultimately what that means is that I have to go into each individual plan, look at what phones are available and then come back out. But I very quickly want to be able to make a decision on the basis of what prepay plan is available against what type of phone I can get for that prepay plan. So at this point I'm abandoning or I'm going to start again. So I go back to the beginning of the page and this time I scroll down on the home page and I click on phones. So then I can see that within phones that comes up straight away, HTC is an option on the left with regards to filter. So I click on that. It brings up all of the various different options that are available within the HTC phone. But now I can't see whether this HTC phone is a prepay phone or a bill pay phone. It's not detailed beside the actual phone and that is where I'm putting my attention because I'm interested in the phone. Then I move my gaze up a little bit. I can see a short line which says switch to pay as you go phones. It's a small link button. It's a clear signpost. It's a very important call to action. In this case, it's probably too small for the actual search journey that I'm trying to perform. So I do actually click on the prepay phone, and I do then click on the phones that are available. That brings me into the next stage and into the shopping cart facility. So I now have the HTC phone that I'm interested in in front of me. I can see some key details with regards to the phone, but there's no buy now button above the fold. I don't know where I need to click in order to be able to buy the button. I scroll down, and I can see more detail, and I can see the add to basket button. OK, that's great. But above that, I can see include pay-as-you-go phones but I'm already in a pay-as-you-go plan and I'm already clicked on a pay-as-you-go phone and, and now I'm confused or I'm a little bit concerned that there's this new message with regards to include pay-as-you-go phones and a click box, tick box. Um, am I now maybe including bill pay phones within the phones that I have? And so as I mentioned before we have to scroll down to read the basket. As I move to the next stage with regards to purchasing the phone and I'm starting to proceed to check out some of the information maybe which should be included, links to details on purchase at the uh, checkout stage, so that's an idea where I can always go back and just make sure that I'm happy that I've got the right device, bring up all of the various phones that are available to me. Do you currently have it in stock? Is it ready to send? Is there a time limit on the cart? Does it give me the, the idea that you know this is a process where the details will be timed out because it's a secure process? Summary of shopping cart details available on the screen at all time. So that's just some more details with regards to the add-ons and the various different things that I've actually included. The ability to add items without changing screen is really, really important. At this stage, contextual help, live chat is also maybe important. Ability to print out the pricing or to print out the plan, because I may come back, I may not decide that I'm actually going to buy this now because I'm actually looking around. Or I want to send this on to a friend because I know a friend is looking for a phone as well. FAQs to relevant details when I'm actually going through this part of the purchase cycle is also something which may be interesting. Some of the open-ended comments which came out of this. At first glance, the website looked easy to navigate, but when doing the task, it proved otherwise. Finding tariff information was not easy, nor was finding the pay-as-you-go option for buying the phone. The website is not very user-friendly. If I did purchase with them, it would only be in-store. Too complicated and too many choices. So how did Verizon do it, and why did they score so high? On the home page, prepaid devices. I click on the image. It brings me straight into the details page. Immediately, on the fold of the details page, it's telling me how I should be searching for devices if I am going through a prepaid plan. And it gives me a one, two, three. The universal, these are the steps that you need to follow, and they also have the view available devices in uppercase larger text. Now, I mean, this could even be signposted better than it currently is by using color or grouping in a slightly different way. However, I get the message and I understand how I should be moving forward. So then I move to actually looking at the devices. I know that I'm in the pre-play plan area. And so I scroll down through all of the various different devices that are available and I can see the HTC device that they have that's available. It has a buy now button directly underneath it. Straight into call to action. I'm straight into the cart. And now I can see all of the various different elements that are available to me actually within this prepaid HTC phone and some key elements that they offer. So one of the offer is add accessories. They've got a clear summary on the right hand side with regards to the cart and then another key element. They've got add another device if I want to add another device to my actual basket. So use of icons, uses of color, different things like that breaks up the page, makes it easy to understand and also drawing out information and bringing it forward.
So there are some of the things that Verizon were doing which were really bringing up their score with regards to the online purchase stage. So some things to consider from what we've looked at this morning. Consider a visual hierarchy which separates out important elements and cause can pause people's attention. It's called page friction and it's very important. Try exposing options that are essential along the pathway to searching for a product. So be careful with using drop downs and all that type of stuff and at all times bear in mind the call to action and balancing funnel pages and discovery pages. Consider, consider the need state of customers when you have arrived when they have arrived at your website. What are they actually looking for? and how would you communicate that? So benefit buttons rather than just actual functional buttons can also be very, very important. So, my name is Jared Farrell. I'm Senior Client Advisor at Global Reviews. Thank you very much for coming along this morning. I just want to, you know, with regards to Global Reviews and what we do, we believe that we provide a totally unique insight into how in-market consumers research and make decisions about your brands, your products and your competitors online. We will be able to help you make decisions about your online sales journey and help you make it more effective at converting prospective leads uh, over your competitors. We'll help you look at where you need to focus resources to maximize this online sales and customer experience. A fundamental element of what we provide and why clients are working with us is that we can provide a benchmark and a best practice benchmark with regards to customer experience, not only within your industry, but across the world. And ultimately, what this comes down to is customer effort. How easy is it for a customer to buy from you online? And we have a customer effort score, which is a, an essential KPI, which is up front and center on the portal that we offer to clients who buy into our program. And so there are some of the elements with regards to what we deliver uh, within Global Reviews. Industries covered, we work very specifically within key industries and uh, we, rather than going across the board, those key industries are banking and finance, insurance, energy, superannuation, travel, retail, telecommunications, higher learning, online sports betting and government. So as I said, we don't cover absolutely everything. We focus very specifically on individual markets and using in market consumers, we research best practice with regards to measuring customer experience and benchmarking customer experience around the world. Thank you very much again for coming along this morning and if you have any questions, please do get in touch. Goodbye.